Yes, uh, hello guys. Uh, as a part of Waiting Fiction program, uh, I am going to deliver a lecture on computer networks and security subject. Uh, in that, I am delivering uh, the topics regarding the model number one, which is application layer. As a takeaway from the previous session, uh, just I'm explaining few concepts of what we had discussed in the previous session. We'll discuss about domain name system, what is domain name, how the domain name conflict can be resolved, and what are top level domains and uh, other important aspects of domain name system. And we also saw many protocols of application layer, like, uh, layer, like FTP protocol, HTTP protocol, and so on. Okay. In this lecture, we'll see some application-oriented uh, concepts of uh, you know, uh, network architecture. Uh, I think until so far, what we discuss all comes together. One of the uh, fundamental architecture called as client server. Correct? No. So we'll discuss one more important application. What we have called as peer-to-peer -peer application. Uh, what are the major difference between peer-to-peer -peer application and client server application? In case of client server. Client will send a request. We can have multiple clients, a number of clients can send a request to one server. Okay. The server will process the information and it will reply back. Okay. So if the, the central point connection fails, the complete network fails. But in case of peer-to-peer, -peer, there is no single point of connection. There is no centralized server. Okay. That is the meaning of peer-to-peer -peer application. Okay. How the files will be distributed in peer-to-peer -peer file distribution uh, with the help of uh, how the scalability can be achieved with the help of peer-to-peer -peer application. Okay? In case of client-server application, if any new client want to join the communication, he has to request the server. But in case of peer-to-peer -peer application, it's not like that. Whenever anybody want to join the network, he can join the network with the help of internet. He can leave the network with the help of internet okay he don't want to ask any server at all clear okay so if you if you look look at the uh, you know uh, you know compliance you know uh, uh, performance analysis of client server and also with respect to peer to peer uh, and this we'll see that in this lecture okay as in the uh, uh, diagram represents i have one you know server here i have multiple clients multiple clients here and the total time required to access the file with the help of uh, you know uh, this file access this file using the client server architecture can be constructed with the help of dcs that is uh, you know the time required uh, to uh, you know the total time required or total you know uh, the uh, bandwidth required to access the file is uh, should be greater than or equal to maximum value of or the maximum value of total number of files which are allocated in the server divided by us is nothing but users i have how many users i have n number of users correct no so then we have represented it as us okay so i need to say that is i can have n number of files which are located divided by us that is server uh, is going to uh, no, uh, take the data uh, comma f or uh, individual file divided by d minimum that is d minimum is nothing but the minimum time required to first the data okay so what we have taken here time to spend one copy that is equal to f by us this is time to spend one copy of file okay time to spend n number of files which are located in the client uh, server that can be represented by nf divided by us okay so uh, what is this client downloading rate what is the downloading rate uh, that can be determined with the help of dcs should be greater than or equal to maximum value of the time uh, spent to copy n number of files with the help of the server comma f divided by d okay so a uh, minimum client download time can be represented with the help of d uh, f divided by d minimum this is the performance analytics that can be represented with the help of downloading rate of client server the to fetch the file should be equal to maximum value or greater than the, or equal to maximum value of nf divided by us comma f divided by t minimum value okay now we'll see how that can be done with the help of peer-to-peer -peer file distribution Okay, we saw the same uh, downloading rate with the help of client server. We'll see the performance analytics for peer to peer architecture. Okay, so before studying that, uh, going for that particular analysis, 
we have some terminologies server transmission must upload at least one copy of file time to spend one copy should be equal to af divided by uh, us that is uh, from the server how much accessing the file uh, each client must download file copy minimum uh, time that can be represented by f divided by demon which we had already depicted in the previous slide and uh, a maximum uploading rate that is limiting uh, maximum downloading rate or uh, uploading rate can be represented with help of us plus ui us is nothing but from the server and if you want to upload any data that can be represented with help of a number of files so yes there so yes into ui that should be represented with the help of should be greater than or equal to maximum value of f divided by us to fetch one file comma f divided by demon the minimum time comma enf that is number of files divided by us why do i take an, uh, you know all the summation of all the all the users because i may not download the data from only one server correct no i am i'm not downloading the data file from one uh, server i'm downloading the part of the file from all the uh, you know users present in the network so we have us plus summation i is equal to 1 to n into ui okay when the presence number of users appears present in the network okay so that is the reason why we have taken summation i is equal to 1 to n summation indicates addition of all the users time plus us that is user uh, uh, server okay so this is the complete you know uh, you know uh, performance metrics that can be used to measure the downloading rate of peer to peer file distribution how the files are distributed in the peer to peer architecture and this is what the file distribution that can be happen with help of client server architecture so moving forward one of the finest application for peer to peer architectures bitorrent application i think you might have been heard of this name uh, why quite oftenly whenever the user want to download any videos or movies and all they used to download with the help of one of the finest peer to peer application called as bitorrent application okay and i think we let me explain this important architecture of bitorrent with the help of the diagram which is depicted here uh, let us consider uh, we have peers like peer 1 peer 2 peer 3 peer 4 we have all these peers we have and uh, for example i think i i think you you might have been saw the application of bitorrent uh, when you are downloading when in which you are not at all for example i want to download a movie i'll call it as movie 1 or video 1 okay i'm not going to download what is the major difference between peer to peer and bitorrent or uh, else peer to peer application client server the better example is youtube and all the youtube server make us to see the complete video after buffering from the scratch i mean starting point to the last point correct no after buffering all this then only i can see this part after buffering this then only i can see this part correct no so i wanted to tell you is it's going to fetch the data from the single server okay but in case of peer to peer application it's not like that the multiple data i mean the copies of the multiple data can be downloaded from different peers of the network okay and we are going to call the division of the data as chunks here the file the complete file or the complete video or whatever the file it might be if we are dividing here in case of peer to peer architecture and we are going to call individual uh, division as chunk chunk 1 chunk 2 chunk 3 and chunk these are called as chunks of the network okay so what you have to uh, see here what you have to observe in this you know file uh, you know uh, you know uh, network in case of bitorrent uh, in case of bitorrent application whatever the network it might be whatever the you know division it might be each division uh, let me consider i have a video and i'm going to divide that video into three parts let me call it as chunk 1 chunk 2 and chunk 3 i have three peers this is first system the second machine and the third peer i have what i'll do is i'll call, i'll i'll see to it where the copy one is present i mean uh, chunk 1 is present where the chunk 2 is present and where the chunk 3 is present based on the availability i'll request this video this video will download at the same time or the complete chunks of the videos are downloading at the same time this operation is uh, the mainly happen in case of peer to peer architecture which improves the performance of downloading okay and which also improves the performance of the throughput i mean to say the rate of downloading will be very high okay peers in torrent can receive the file and also can send the file 
and the division is called as commonly called as chunks and each chunk commonly will be divided into 256 kb okay so this is what exactly called as how exactly the bit torrent application works which is an important application of very important application of peer to peer architecture okay what are the important you know uh, the, this explanation what i given uh, 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 but well uh, if if the uh, uh, division has no chunks at all no chunks at all but will accumulate them over time from other peers okay and also registers with the tracker to get get list of peers connected to subset of peers i had forgot to tell this there is a tracker who track where the chunk is present where the list of chunks and list of peers are present that can be obtained and that can be monitored with the help of tracker okay while downloading peers uploads things to other peers also peers may change peers with whom it exchanges the chunk okay and such peers are called as churn okay peers may come and go the peers they come to the network and they can leave to the network we can call them as churn okay and the division of the file is called as chunk Okay. Once a peer has entire file, it may leave or uh, no, remain in the torrent. Or that depends upon the user. Okay, this is one of the finest application of BitTorrent application. The next important topic which I want to discuss is distributed hash table. What we discuss is about all about the performance of uh, peer to peer application, performance of client server application, and before, uh, one of the typical example of peer to peer application is BitTorrent, how that works, and its performance. Now we'll see one of the finest, uh, you know, uh, the data storage we can call them as distributed hash table. How the uh, client and server uses distributed hash table to uh, make the operation very efficient. Okay, distributed distributed hash table is a centralized database which consists of two important uh, tuple. One is key and one is value. I think you might have been heard of heard of name called as hash table. Hash indicates the address of it. Uh, in case of arrays, we we'll call it as indices. No, in the same way, in case of hash table, we'll call them as address of that. Okay, let us see one example for that. Uh, the keys could be social security numbers and the values could be corresponding human names. Okay, the better example is uh, the sec uh, social security number will be the key value and the place or uh, the value will be the name of the person. Or the keys could be the contact names, for example, name of the movies, albums, software, and the value could be the IP address at which the content is stored. Clear? This is the example of key pair, uh, key value uh, pair uh, thing, and it's a uh, uh, you know it consists of two tuples, one is key and one is value. <coughs> okay, this is called as this is what exactly how exactly distributed table basics of distributed distributed hash table commonly known as DHT. And in DHT, if the database stores content names and the corresponding IP address, we can query with a specific content name and the database returns the IP address that stores with the specific content. Okay. Building such a database is straightforward with the client server architecture that stores all key value pairs in one central server. That is the meaning of distribution, distributed hash table. Okay, and peer-to-peer -peer architecture uh, that will store key pay, key value pairs, and in case of peer-to-peer -peer system, each peer will only hold a small subset of the totally totality of the key value pairs. Will allow any peer to query the distributed database with a particular key. The distributed database will then locate the peers and then the corresponding pairs and return the key value for the query. I think you might have been studied the database management system in which whenever you request the query for the corresponding query, you'll get the replay. Similarly, whenever you request the data from the database, you'll get the value from the distributed hash table. Okay, any peer will also be allowed to insert new key value pair into the database. Such a distributed database is referred to as <coughs> Such a distributed database is referred to as distribution, distributed hash table. I hope you got the logic of that. Uh, let me go with the designing part of it. In the design, the querying peer sends its query to all other peers in the network 
okay that match the key can correspond to the matching pairs such an approach is completely unscalable of course as it would require each peer not only know about all other peers in the network but even worst the worst case have each query sent all peers to address this problem of the scale let's now consider organizing the peers in a circle and that hashing table technique is called as circular hash table okay this is what exactly which overcomes the problem of uh, distributed distributed hash table okay whenever the data is fetched by this node in case of distribution has to be it has to keep on searching all the data but in case of here it don't want to do it we can analyze this this distributed hash table uh, with respect to circular we'll analyze this okay who is responsible for love and here why if the node number three want to access the data from the lemon who is responsible that can be explained with algorithms okay each peer is only aware of its intermediate successor and predecessor like you can see here this node number three is aware of one and four okay and uh, for example peer five knows the ip address and identifier for peer eight and four but does not necessarily know anything about any other peers in the distributed hash table this circular arrangement of the peers is a special case of the overlay matrix okay and as we uh, see in the distributed distributed hash table dst responsible for who is responsible for key 11 using the circular overlay the peer 3 creates a message saying who is responsible for key 11 and sends this to clockwise direction so when peer 4 receives the message the uh, about the key 11 it determines that it is not responsible for the key you can check out here the 4 is not at all responsible because its predecessor is 3 and its i mean successor is 3 and its predecessor is 5 again it will be forwarded to node number 5 it's also the successor is 4 and predecessor is 8 okay and this process continues until the message uh, arrives at the peer 12 who determines that it is the closest peer to key 11 at this point peer 12 can send a message back to peer 3 saying that i will be responsible you can check out here aram check and see here okay the example that we can uh, able to depict okay as uh, who is responsible for 3 i mean uh, the key 11 we will send the data we will check out no they are not responsible again 4 will check out as it is a clockwise direction uh, 4 again no its peers are different again it's not at all near also again 5 will check no and again 8 will check no again 11 10 will check somewhat okay and again 12 will check and these two are responsible we can consider any one and that node will send back the data to node number 3 saying that i am responsible for key love one but this solution introduces a new problem okay each peer is only aware of only two neighbors to find the node responsible for key okay all nodes in the dst will have to forward a message around the circle and total number of message forward should be equal to n divided by 2 where n is represents number of nodes this is overcome by adding shortcuts so that each peer not only keep track of the its intermediate successor and predecessor but also relatively small number of shortcuts peers scattered across the circle that can be depicted with the help of this diagram okay so what it says when a peer receives a message that it's for the query it forwards to its neighbor and also to the shortcut neighbors for example Peer 4 receives a message asking about the key 11. We can check out here. Key 11. This level 4 will forward the data to its next peer in the clock ones. Also, it will ask for the, the nearest peer. I think 10 is somewhat responsible. Then it will go for 12. Okay. Clearly, shortcuts can significantly reduce the same number of messages that will be transmitted across the circle or cycle. This is what exactly called as circular dst with shortcuts okay this somewhat you know performs well compared to uh, circular dst okay so this is all about distributed hash table and how it can be overcome in case of distributed hash table it has to follow all the tuples all the complete database and it's a tedious job that can be overcome with the help of circular dst again in circular dst we have a drawback that it's each node will be aware of all its neighbors so we have circular DST with shortcuts somewhat performs efficiently. The next important and last topic of this 
session is peer to peer okay in peer to peer system the peers are not owned by any service providers but the users will be the actual masters we don't have any client server here each and every user will behave like a master here a peer can arrive or vanish from the system without any warning or prior notice by default thus while designing a dsd one must also be concerned about maintenance of dsd overlay in the presence of such peer chance okay to explain this better you can uh, refer to this diagram here we have this the first diagram let me uh, go with the first diagram for explaining the peer chance uh, uh now to handle the peer chance we will require each peer to track its first and second successor also each peer must peer periodically verify both of its successor, successor alive or not if they left the network we should be updated because in case of peer to peer network no nodes are responsible for no nodes are responsible by any kind of service here okay let's consider a situation wherein peer five leaves abruptly now the two peers residing the departed peer four and three will update the success state information in this way peer four replaces its first successor with the second uh, i think you can check out here if this node the concept is if this node leaves a network without information then the four successors should be i mean uh, predecessors should be three and the successor should be eight. immediately that has to be updated that is what exactly how exactly peer chain works okay you can refer the last one last point of this uh, peer chain peer 13 sends a message to peer 1 saying what will be the predecessor and successor of peer 13 this will be forwarded through the dst until it reaches the peer 12 and this responds back to peer 13 saying that peer 12 will be the predecessor and peer 15 will be the successor and this is how exactly the peer chain works okay uh, so i think the same explanation and in case of bit turned also this will work okay and i have had covered uh, the main three topics in this lecture one is a performance matrix of client server and peer to peer architecture for the support to downloading right followed by a distribution hash table uh, that can be uh, uh, go uh, went with two important flavors circular dst and circular dst with shortcuts and the last topic is peer chain okay <coughs> thank you so much if you have any doubts you can contact me and we'll see you guys in the next lecture Oh